Hello, it's Leo with Scraptastic Patchwork, and we are back with part two of our beginner easy quilt series. So in this part, we will be sewing our patchwork pieces together with a quarter inch seam. That is a very common size seam for quilting. We're gonna learn what chain piecing is and why that can save you a lot of time and brain power and then we're going to trim and square our blocks to make them the same size. We left off after we cut all of our pieces with four stacks of our fabrics here for our strip quilt. So we're gonna have those two dark and two light, two and a half by eight and a half and we're gonna start by sewing the two lights together and then the two darks. Then we're gonna do the two patch of the lights to the two patch of the darks. So at this point, at that point, you're gonna, if you have, like I do here, well, actually that wouldn't be too bad. But if you have a directional fabric, then you, when you sew the four pieces together, then you kind of want to think about your orientation. So let's begin. As a reminder as well, in addition to worrying about the direction of your fabric, what we're going to do with this block is I, des I designed it and then also many people, this is how they do this kind of strip quilt that turns into a rail fence or, or another design like that is that you do since you're working with two darks and two lights, you start with your darkest on one side and you're gonna end with your lightest on the other. So that's also what you should consider when you put the two fabrics, the two lights with the two darks, you don't want it to be like this is what I'm saying. So you wanna make sure that when we get to that point where we're doing these two patches together, that it's in the right order as well. Okay, so let's get into discussing how to sew our fabrics together. So a quarter inch seam is, is the common size seam in quilting. And what that means is that your lines here on your machine, you will see quarter inch, half inch, five eighths, and a half inch. Right? Oh, no. What does that say? <laughs> I never paid attention to this one over here. That's just showing, on my machine at least, that's showing where the, when you're wanting to stop a quarter inch away from the end of your fabric here. That's just the line that shows that. So ignore what I just said there. Okay, so you want your fabric, this side of your fabric, your right side, to line up at that quarter inch line. And another easy way to do that is most machines come pretty standard with a quarter inch foot. This is the typical one that's already uh, on your machine when you buy it. And you can easily check that by taking any kind of uh, little tape measure or whatever and you just measure from the needle to the line here it's it's a quarter inch from the needle where the needle is putting your seat your your stitching to that line because you want your stitch line and your edge of your fabric here to be a quarter inch away from each other so the way I do it because I know I have a quarter inch foot is I just, instead of following that line, I just line up my fabric constantly with the right edge of my foot. That's the easiest way to do it. And if you just keep that lined up, your fabric edge to the right edge of your foot, you're gonna have a pretty consistent quarter inch. Now, the mind can wander, and so you might get wiggly from time to time, and that's okay. You just, as you get more experience, you'll just get straighter and straighter 
and when you get more experience working with different weights of fabric that that also can kind of mess you up so it's a good place to start quilting cotton is um, because it's nice and thin and it tends to be easier to sew with so that's what that quarter inch is now the other thing about sewing when you're piecing your patchwork together is that in a quilt you're going to have lines of seams lines of stitching going everywhere so unlike garment sewing or when you do like a purse or something you would back stitch to make sure you lock that stitching in as in the beginning and the end of a seam you don't have to do that with quilting with when you're doing patchwork together because you're going to sew your patchwork in to other patchwork and your seam will get locked in in the future so you line that your foot up I like to hold my threads here so that they don't get pulled in and some people start with what's called an ender and a, a leader and an ender where you have just a little piece of material that your needle is already into and uh, I can show you that in the future sometimes I do that and sometimes I don't this is I'll show you a little sample of that it also helps with uh, it's just little tiny scraps that you can put in before and after you sew so your needle is always going into a piece instead of having to hold it or at the end of your seam to cut your your thread from your machine it's a good idea definitely so you can just go slow in the beginning just again making sure that that right side of your foot is lined up to the edge of your fabric and there you go so this is where if I were to make these enders and or these leaders and enders I would just shove that little piece in like that and then I can go on but for right now I'm not gonna do that because I want to show you what chain piecing is first before we would do that so that is your quarter seam and of course when you sew patchwork together you're putting the right sides of the fabric together there you have it your first seam so what does it mean to chain piece so you sew your two pieces together and normally after you sew your patchwork together then you're going to take it off the machine and move on to the next well when you have a situation where you have multiple pieces coming together and you don't have to change the orientation it's simply two stacks of pieces that you can just keep putting together the same exact way so what you can do is you do your quarter inch leave it on the machine and then you can go on to your next two pieces the exact same thing so it's very nice and efficient and there are many different reasons and ways that you can do this but it's kind of mindless sewing that's really fun to do when you don't want to think too much but it also saves on thread it obviously saves on time sometimes it's a good tool to use when you're trying to keep 
certain pieces together and you don't want to lose some patchwork or lose an orientation that you've got going on. So you just keep going. with those same two pieces that you need to do and you never cut your thread. You never even have to lift up your presser foot here. It's a really nice way to speed up the process and just relax in what you're doing. So I'm gonna continue sewing my two pieces together and then I'll move on to I'm doing the two dark light ones right now and then I will do the exact th same thing for the two dark ones and then we'll move on to two pieces or a two patch to another two patch and then all of our blocks will be done.
So I want to pop in and show you two things. One thing I can't believe I have forgotten to talk about this whole time. And secondly is what I'm going to show you right now. So I, at the end of that little thing, you saw that I had to change my bobbin. And I didn't have any more bobbins in the off-white thread that I was, the cream thread I was using. And I just didn't feel like winding uh, bobbins right now. So I went ahead and just grabbed a half a bobbin of burgundy thread that I had been using on other projects. So that's okay. Don't feel like you have to have a matchy-matchy um, bobbin thread all the time. See? No one will see that. So d no worries there. But because I lost concentration, I put two together incorrectly. So, you know, this is how it's supposed to look. And I did that. So because they're both directional fabrics, then, you know, I would have to, if I cared to, I would have to take the seam out and start over. So if that bothers you, that's no big deal. You can just take that seam out. However... I have always embraced, well, I haven't always, but as of late, I have embraced my mistakes because it's kind of like a rite of passage for me. Um, I think there there's a myth there. There's some kind of thing I've heard before that the Amish would purposely put mistakes in their quilts to, hum to keep themselves humble. And... If that were true or not, first of all, uh, I don't know how they, how perfect are they that they would have to purposely put a mistake in their quilts. Good for them if that's true. But I, I like to think that this is an art form and it's reality that it's not going to be perfect. And so I like to leave my mistakes in because... That shows me that something, that there was a struggle of some sort in that, in that time period that I was making that piece of art. You know, we're, we all are under a weird kind of stress right now and our thoughts can wander. We're, our concentration is going to be kind of weird. And so that's, that's absolutely what happened here is I was kind of in a zone and I was going good and then I had to stop and do the bi the bobbin and then I started thinking about something having to do with you know my family and that's why that happened so why wouldn't I put that in this is this is reality this is life putting something in there that is I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't have the words for it right now, but this will remind me that I am human and I have bad days and I have lots of bad days. And so when I look at that, I'm going to, I'm going to be proud of that mistake. And so I'm going to keep that in. So I just wanted to pop in and say that. Secondly, um, I didn't talk about thread for some reason. Um, a lot of quilters will tell you to use 100% cotton um, because if you use poly with cotton fabrics, it used to be that they would, uh, when you would, they would shrink at different rates in when you'd wash it. And so the poly thread or the cotton poly thread would cut through your fabric. I guess I have not found that to be the case. In my experience, and I've heard others say it, it just isn't the case anymore. Um, maybe it was just the kind of poly that they were using back in the day. I don't know. But my machine does not like 100% cotton thread. Um, it's too curly, and it just doesn't like it. Now, my other machine, my embroidery machine, or, or just the, the one with all the hundred things on it, um, I can use like an Aurifil uh, thread in that. And they're nice. I mean, of course, really, you know, expensive thread is nice when it's like that, but 
the kind of thread that I predominantly use nowadays is either a Coates mercerized in a most thread is mercerized now, but um, just a Coates, which is, uh, I think it's a, it's a poly, or maybe this one is 100% cotton. Yeah, this one's 100%, but it's mercerized. And then, well, I'm not showing you good examples because <laughs> this one's cotton too, but it's not expensive is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, I love to use variegated thread. This is star. Um, I just think it adds another layer of interest to your project, especially when you're doing quilting stitches. So uh, vintage thread. Now, I do, I do use vintage thread from time to time. And that whole test that people say, you know, to pull on the thread and if it breaks, then you shouldn't use it. I don't understand that because all thread breaks if you, if you do that. So... If, but I do believe that vintage thread, if you have thread that's that's been sitting around too long, I do think that it, it accumulates too much dust. Um, yeah, I'm sure it does degrade. So I would just kind of be careful with it. I use that for um, fun little projects. You know, if you're, if you're doing fabric collage, um, I wouldn't necessarily use vintage thread for quilting. That's just my opinion. Um, but in a pinch, I think it's okay for piecing. Um, for the quilting stitches, I would say go ahead and, and, and try to use um, a newer thread for that. But you definitely do not use need to buy expensive thread. Mercerized is very nice. Um, because I think it's stronger and, and machines like it. So that's why I suggest that. But I think even Aurifil is probably mercerized. They just don't say it is, but, um, it, I think you can experiment on your own, what you like and what your machine likes. I just know that Aurifil does not work in my machine. <laughs> it breaks constantly. I've tried all different kinds of tensions. I've tried everything and it just doesn't but i put it in like i said my other brother with the multiple stitches and that one is great so um so i i i do have i just don't have it right by me right now uh, that a uh, poly cotton mix i think that's great too because that makes it nice and strong as well so you just want a strong thread and one that you can trust so what we have here is a whole well that one got undone whole bunch of chained pieces and that fun so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut it between the two you know the light pieces and the dark pieces just to keep that separate for now and you can do one of two things you can either take this to the iron and press all these pieces. Oh, some other unattached pieces here. So you want to press your seam now. You can either do it with an iron, like I just said, or you can finger press. Finger press is just how it sounds. Instead of an iron, you press with your fingers. So you can push it over to one side. If you remembered from the last episode, generally you want to do to the darker piece of material, your seam. In this case, you probably would see the seam through this. But again, as it gets darker, you, it really won't matter that much. We're going to, how we're going to sew these blocks together is kind of, all over the place so uh, the way your seams go won't really make that huge of a difference um, our seams are not going to be really matchy matchy so to the next block so it, it really won't matter but in this case I'm, I'm just gonna press it to the darker fabric so then you just use your finger or you fingernails I don't really have fingernails and you just press that seam over so that kind of saves you time at the machine um, however if that 
that may be an icky feeling for you or you maybe you don't like that sound sometimes it bothers me <laughs> i have a problem with um i know this sounds kind of weird but like cotton balls like at the dentist in your teeth and then when people like try to bite something that's in fabric oh i don't like it so sometimes my nails give me that same feeling so i just use my my fingertips because that's how i can handle it so um that's what i'm going to do is i'm going to press all these i'm just going to go you know take my chain here and just go down the line pressing all these to once to that darker fabric side and then the same with my other my darker fabrics and then i'm going to match my chains up here after i finger press them and sew them together it would be on this side like this so obviously this is an upside down orientation because the blocks go that way but it was just so happens that's how I grabbed my my chains but you can if that bothers you you can always go to the other side of the chain but I'm just going to line them up like this and then all my chains will stay together if you have if this whole thing bothers you you can just clip them you know very easily just clip those little threads between and then it won't matter. Then you can maybe have a stack of your light sides and your dark sides and put them together. So whatever way makes sense for you. I just kind of like the idea of having one big long chain at the end. I will have to then uh, cut my strings at that point, but it's just another fun thing to do. Um, whatever makes sense to you and whatever you like to, to juggle. So again, here, I will have, I will unchain these pieces so that you can see what, as a reminder, what you're sewing together. Okay. So again, finger press or iron press if it, if you don't like to finger press. I also think sometimes finger pressing keeps when you're doing two strips together like that it 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 really is easy to get that seam out of whack but finger pressing to me you can control that a lot better because of course you don't have that big iron and even though you're coming down with it sometimes it can get off so um that's uh, I kind of just like that finger pressing thing okay so this is how you are now going to put these pieces together. So remember, dark to light, your darkest on the left, your lightest on the right. And so I would just take those four pieces, two patch and a two patch, and put them together. And now I can chain them again. and have the next line of, uh, and then all my blocks will be done. And then we will go on to pressing our blocks. And uh, squaring them up.
So I have no idea what happened there. I d huh. So apparently I skipped a whole scene. Must have been when I was messing with the with the bobbin, but I thought I would finish this very last piece with you at a regular speed since I had to stop and fix that one anyway. So the very next step is now I am going to clip my strings in between. All right. And then we're going to press all of these really nice with the iron and maybe some steam so that all of these seams are nice and flat. Um, again, we don't have to worry because we're going to, let me show you now, because when I've talked about this before, I didn't have an example to show you, but now I do. Okay. So it's going, I'm going to leave it up to you how we orient these blocks, but I will show you different things that you can do. Um, this is probably what I'm going to do. Can you see that? Maybe not. Let me switch over to the other camera. So this is the orientation that I'm probably going to do. They're not pressed yet. They're not trimmed yet. But I wanted to give you an idea of what we're going for. So if you see these line up in a stair kind of fashion. But there's lots of different things you can do. Um, and we'll play with that when we're done squaring these up in the in the next part when we discuss design and, and pattern and and how we're going to put the top together. So right now we're going to press them all and because we're sewing them like this there's not going to be any minor intersections that are going to be together. Obviously when you sew the four blocks together there will be this intersection here but all these patchwork pieces will not have to nest with the next block so we're not going to worry about that however I just want to show you what nesting looks like uh, obviously right sides to right sides and we talked about nesting last part but this see if I'm showing you correctly here this is nesting when one seam goes to the other you know they go in opposite directions and then you kind of push them together so that each seam is kind of hitting each other that's when you get those good intersections when these two seams come together and nest so if i was to be sewing those together like that that's when pressing the seams in opposite directions would matter but since we're not doing this in this particular uh oh now i have forgotten here we <laughs> no that's not it oh funny how come i can't remember now the way it goes oh for goodness sakes there we go all right um, it won't matter how you press your seams other than one way or the other. You know, don't, you know, try not to give them a, one seam going in opposite <laughs> directions like that. So I'm just going to go with the dark, try to get them going in one direction, basically. So this seam, this seam, this seam, all going in one direction. But if it doesn't happen, again, it's not the end of the world. But that's what we're going to try to aim for, and I'll do that next. So I have my stack of blocks that have been cut apart, 32 of them, and I'm going to start pressing. So I like to start on the back. So in this particular case, all we're going to be doing is pressing all of our seams to the dark side, all one way. Pretty easy. 
but again you want to make sure that you're being aware of pulling things out of you want this to remain as straight as possible so what I like to do is I press my iron down here on the light side I just barely I hold this up very barely pull it and what you're doing there is making sure you don't get any folds in your seams but you're not stretching you're just holding it just barely straight and then you pick up the iron and you move on to the next one and you move on to the next one you can then press it on each side if you'd like you can give it a little steam if you'd like until you feel good that those are flat flip it over and so the goal here is to keep your your seams all going in the same direction and you're going to try to avoid having too much folding here you want this to be flat your seams to be flat so same kind of thing where you just kind of hold this up and move on to the next move on to the next you can do side and side uh, check to make sure you can use the tip of your iron to just kind of run if you find that you maybe have this happening you can kind of use the tip of your iron to push that back up but remember it's pressing not ironing and so then you have your nice flat block all right so do that with all of them and then we'll start the squaring process so my blocks turned out pretty square which does not always happen I really couldn't find any that were really out of whack um, which again I'm pretty amazed about but I think it's because I'm trying to be very deliberate <laughs> about this um, but okay so for this particular quilt I wanted eight and a half square so there's two different ways to square it up one is by using your mat and a straight edge or you can use a template so if you see here this is my template and it's pretty right on I mean we're talking tiny bit off I, I don't see a need to square this block honestly um, you can see right here I'm just it's a little wavy but not enough for me to really care so I don't have much uh, to cut to trim however let me show you so what you would do with a template is place it on you'd go whoosh, turn it if you have one of these rotating mats turn it turn it turn it if you don't let me take this away and show you on a regular mat I if you are comfortable that your seams are straight you can line up your seams on a line and then you can trim when you if if in the case of this eight and a half square if you line up your seams on a line then you want just a quarter on each side to trim so this has to be an eighth on each side I mean excuse me a quarter on each side and that's where you would line up your straight edge but see mine is pretty on as you can see maybe just a sixteenth off so I'm happy with that I don't know let's look at this side line up my seams so that's off just a tiny bit there so literally this is what I took off so eight and a half now if when you do this you aren't perfectly square then it's there's nothing wrong with going down a size to like an eight and a quarter block or even an eight inch block a square block 
Who cares if you make it a tiny bit smaller? So all that matters is you're squaring your block, meaning the length and the width, the, you know, in all sides, a square block. It, it, if you find yourself off in any way, your block got wonky, this is, you know, somehow taller on this side than the other. All that matters is that you're squaring that block down to whatever size you can get all of your blocks to. That's all that matters. If you make a smaller quilt and you really needed it, the size that this is going to end up, you can always add a border. I mean, there's always things that you can do to kind of fudge the situation. Um, you don't need to take your blocks apart and redo them or, you know, start over again. You don't. So you can get your blocks to eight and a half square, eight and a quarter or eight. It, that's totally fine. So I'm happy with my blocks just the way they are. And that is where we're going to stop in this uh, particular part. And we're going to move on to next week where we put together our rows and how we're going to sew our blocks together. Decide on your pattern. Well, I will lie, I will put these out, all of them together, and we'll kind of play with different patterns. And then we're going to sew the quilt top together. Thank you, and I will see you again.